Thank you very much for the introduction, uh, Alan. It's a great pleasure to be here today and to support the work of the Urban Design uh, Group. Uh, I trained as an architect. I was a Roman scholar in my youth. Uh, I've been a trustee and vice chairman of the Georgian Group, chairman of the Art Workers Guild, uh, and also trustee of the Prince's Foundation. Uh, but I've been with my practice, Adam Architecture, for 35 years, 25 of which as a director. But we're here today to talk about uh, Nans Leden, which I started working on with the Duchy in 2003. Uh, at that stage, Newquay, uh, which is the North Cornish town upon which Nans Leden is uh, situated, had a population of 22,000, which grew to 110,000 in the summer. Uh, it was almost entirely uh, the economy of the town on high volume, low spending tourism, so very more cultural. Uh, and it was quite a depressed settlement as well. And part of the ambition was to strengthen and diversify the economy of uh, Newquay. Uh, and one of the key players in this was the um, chief, then chief planning officer, Phil Mason, who uh, said, uh, in my mind, a visionary statement, just forget normal planning horizons, take a 50 year vision as to what Newquay could become and plan for the long term. Uh, so that is what we're going to explain to you today, uh, the journey that we've been on uh, and the unusual approach that we've taken uh, upon the way. We've found a number of virtuous circles, which I'll share with you um, as well. There we are. Um, at the outset of the project, we established a number of principles which would guide us on our journey. Uh, and I, to my mind, having a clear vision for these sorts of projects is very helpful, not only for explaining the ambitions to other people, but also in time one can be measured against them as well. Uh, there are 10 principles here on the screen. Uh, everything should be led by public consultation. So working with the community of the town, it should be governed by a master plan, which gives you a long-term strategic framework within which you can uh, plan your work. Uh, in this case, it should be led by sustainability and a holistic view of sustainability, which we'll come back to a bit later on. It should reflect local identity. Where possible, we should use Cornish resources to help strengthen and diversify the economy of the region. Uh, needs to respond to indigenous needs, relate properly to the historic settlement of Newquay, uh, needs to be aware of the environmental impact and to do what we can to um, strengthen that as well. And clearly also from the development point of view, it must use it land efficiently and very importantly, it must be viable. Newquay has a very interesting uh, history. It started off as a fishing uh, port um, and then it had a second career as a minerals port in the 19th century when shipping was lost uh, off Land's End, going from the southern ports up to the Midlands, uh, and the railway was built across Cornwall, so the harbour had a second career as a minerals port. In the 20th century, it, it had a third chapter of its history as a, a, an upmarket holiday destination. There are a number of sort of palace-fronted hotels on the clifftops, which today often are struggling to uh, um, survive, but one or two of them are doing really well by being a bit more innovative. And then more recently, it's become the surf capital of the UK um, as well. The historic town uh, is clustered around the harbour and throughout the 20th century there's been a successive pattern of suburban uh, residential developments which form a crust around the uh, historic core. So the slide on the screen now shows the settlement of Newquay. The harbour is on the uh, north coast of, of the town. You can see that on the left hand side of this map. Uh, on to the very left-hand side, beyond the white area, which is the golf course, is the Fistral Beach, the, the main surfing beach. Um, the rest of the town, you can see the 20th century development. And then the red line articulates the area of search for uh, a growth area for Newquay, as it was then called. And the yellow land highlights the land owned by the Duchy of Cornwall, which you can see is more than half of the area of search for the growth area. And there's also a little yellow area inside the town known as Trigunnel Hill, which we use as our tester site for some of the ideas that we honed uh, later on. When we started, the other white land was owned by 10 other landowners. That's been boiled down now to three. Uh, in the bottom, it's, uh, I should say, Nanzeden is Cornish for Wide Valley. Um, at the bottom, where, where the yellow line, uh, yellow area becomes the white area, that is the bottom of the valley. And there's a stream there, the Chapel Stream. And there's a thick black line on the white land to the south, which is a railway line that goes, as I mentioned, into the historic uh, town centre to the harbour. Um, at the outset of the project, as part of the landowner's vision, a series of strategy documents were commissioned looking at green infrastructure, energy, water, food, transport. Uh, and then there was also a pattern book looking at the character of Newquay. And then uh, we developed a building code, which becomes a governance document to help regulate um, delivery. One of the key things that makes Nansleden unusual is the way in which the landowner went into contract with uh, house builders. 
with a form of contract known as a common aspiration, which binds the landowner and developer together to um, further a common vision. So it fuses the vision of the landowner with the commercial acumen of the developer. And to my mind, that's one of the key reasons for any success we may have enjoyed um, hitherto. In this case, there were three regional house builders, C.G. Fry and Morrish from Dorset, who worked with the Dutchie before at uh, uh, Poundbury, and then Wayne Holmes, who, who are um, West Country uh, based. Uh, and the whole thing has been a, a very much a tight collaboration uh, with uh, those players. And through the common aspiration contract, we have control at each stage. So we sign off the planning drawings and the working drawings, and then the finished building. Uh, and then at that point, it can be sold to a third party. But the incoming owner is then bound by design and community code to maintain their property in an appropriate way. So the quality of place, which is developed at the outset, is then sustained for the long term. Land is sold sequentially, and there's a formula within the common aspiration contract. So the average achieved sales price per square foot sets a land value for the next phase. And in this way, everyone is set on a long term horizon for financial return to create long term uh, value. I mentioned a pattern book. This was the first part of the project I was personally involved with, where we just, uh, before we did any design work, just took time to understand the nature of the settlement of Nanslet, of Newquay, and the character of the town. So a section of the pattern book looks at different kinds of streets. In this case, this is the old high street in the heart of the town centre, looking at the characteristics of that, how it relates to contour, the width, the height of buildings along it, the types of buildings along it, and so on. There's also a section looking at building types, in this case, the double fronted house, which is a very common type on the North Cornish coast, uh, because roads tend to follow the contour. These narrow plan uh, houses work well on that kind of topography, minimizing the amount of excavation. So we look at the characteristics of those houses with different styles, but the underlying principles which tie them together as a, as a uh, building type. We looked at the uh, details of these buildings, the proportions of openings, uh, the materials and other local characteristics like the uh, slate verge you can see on the top left hand side there. We also look very carefully at the types of materials which reflect obviously local identity and in this case on that challenging North Atlantic coast endure in that kind of harsh environment uh, and also the sources of these materials with a view to supporting the local economy and again the common aspiration form of contract allows you to set up long-term supply chains with these local suppliers. The Prince's uh, uh, preference for vernacular architecture is well known, uh, and we realised quite early on, of course, that if you take away cheap fossil fuel, vernacular architecture is intrinsically quite low carbon because it couldn't afford to be uh, anything else. Uh, and whilst that doesn't give you all the answers, it's not as um, at, at odds with the, the architectural stylistic ambition, it's not at odds with the uh, ambition to create something which is exemplary in sustainability uh, terms. And then finally, we had a, a careful study of the kinds of plants that thrive in that maritime environment um, as well. At the outset of the project, Leon Creer, who acted as the master planner for Poundbury, did a, this uh, analysis I show you on the screen just now. Uh, Newquay effectively is built on three uh, hills with rivers um, in between uh, on the top left hand side. Uh, on the right hand side shows you the current structure of the town with the historic town centre by the harbour and large areas of monocultural suburban development through the 20th century. And the ambition to create two new sub centres through the growth of Nansledden to create a better, more balanced uh, urban form and to encourage people to use their uh, walk and use their bicycles to get around rather than the car. So this is the first slide of the master plan, which effectively is a movement network. The urban blocks are typically 40 by 60 meters, give or take, and it sets a framework for long-term uh, vision for development. In the master plan, you can integrate the um, needs of the community as come out of the public consultation, which was the first thing that we did apart from the uh, pattern book. And you can then plan for the long term, for the 50 year vision, before you go back into your shorter time horizons and start to realize it incrementally, everything fits into a bigger hole. In this case, on the screen now, you can see certain roads are highlighted. The red roads are the key roads, and you can see how we've integrated uh, Nanzetan with the surrounding road network, which are also highlighted in red and then how secondary routes liven up the other areas as well. So that you make a proper permeable network, uh, which everyone uh, can then uh, makes it easy to get around on, uh, by, uh, on bicycle or by foot. Uh, the ambition in time is to create 4,000 homes and 4,000 jobs. Uh, at Poundbury, the Dutchie has achieved more than one job per household. So that is the minimum uh, threshold. And 30% of these houses are affordable 
but they're 10 year blind and everybody throughout the scheme. So you've no idea when you walk past a house, whether it's a, an affordable house or an open market um, property. Uh, my practice has developed uh, some software called Place Logic, which is an alternative to space syntax. And it produces this heat map um, to show you the desirability of some routes over others. Uh, the most desirable routes are shown in red, and then the uh, quietest routes are shown in blue, and the other colors obviously uh, in, the in, the, uh, in the middle. And we used this technology to test uh, the network as we were planning the master plan, uh, and to make sure that the local sub-centers with the mixed use elements of the scheme were then all naturally located on hotspots on that network. So this next version of the master plan shows uh, Nansleven, which is a, a new wide market street, which we're currently in detail designed for. And then the other um, purple areas are some of the um, centers of the various quarters of Nansleven. Each block of 500 houses effectively is an urban quarter with its own name. And in the heart of these um, uh, urban quarters is a mixed use um, square. Uh, and anyone living in that quarter is within a five minute walk of that mixed use square and 10 minutes to the town center as shown in these uh, isochrones, the red and blue um, circles you can see on your screen. Each quarter is different on a big scheme of this kind. You don't want every part of the scheme uh, to be the same. Uh, and obviously with a, a size of this size, you get a varied topography and also because you're creating effectively a new sub town center, you will want a number of designed attributes to help differentiate the different quarters of the town uh, as well. And so as part of our uh, vision for Nanset at an early stage, having looked at the master plan, it was then trying to, we, we did an exercise to look at each of these quarters to make sure they were distinct in terms of their character whilst fitting into a greater whole. Uh, the street patterns, the main streets generally go along the contour and the minor streets go down uh, the hill the main streets are continuous, but the minor streets um, are broken so that they tend to be mixed use, uh, sorry, shared surface uh, streets that go down the hill. And then the street naming, uh, to give it local resonance, we use um, names from Mallory's Mort d'Arteur, the death of King Arthur, uh, and then the local um, place names are streets in the other direction to create a sort of weft and walk that has a co coherent character. Um, I mentioned sustainability uh, earlier on, which has guided us on every aspect of Nansleden. Uh, one key aspect is we're not just interested in the performance of buildings, we're interested in creating a place where you can live a low carbon lifestyle, which most people don't talk about. I mentioned the one job per household. Uh, the ambition is to create a dense mixed use walkable neighbourhood, which puts pedestrians and cyclists first, uh, focusing on public transport and ongoing work on that with the highways team and the bus companies and so on. Uh, we've also got a, a place where we might put a, a, a train station in due course. We're in discussion with Network Rail on that. Uh, at the moment. Uh, importantly, every house has access to super fast broadband to encourage home working and clearly in a post COVID world that's even more important. We've taken a fabric first approach to buildings to ensure that you minimize the energy demand before you start using renewables and other things to meet that residual uh, need. Setting up long term su chains of, uh, supply chains to support uh, the use of local materials and create local employment. Where possible using materials made from recycled constituents. Um, buildings are to have at least one elevation if possible where we can fit uh, uh, solar technology. The right hand side of the screen at the bottom, we've got a house that's under construction at the moment where we're using photovoltaic slates, which to our mind look as good as natural slate and it enables us to increase the use of photovoltaic um, uh, technology. Uh, we're using street trees to help shade on the south sides of streets uh, and creating built buildings that are built for the long term so that endurance is a key aspect of that of sustainability as well. And then we also plan for flexibility, so that allowing buildings to be reused over time in a different way. And then we have a very strong range of initiatives to encourage local food production, which is 23% of your carbon footprint. Uh, on the local materials, um, a lot of the houses have Cornish slate on the roofs, where well, that doesn't happen on the bigger houses, they're slate from Wales or from Cumberland. Uh, all the granite is Cornish granite, and we have an arrangement with the quarry where we um, have a, a range of granite components that we use every year. We know approximate numbers of how many components we need. So when they're doing nothing else, they get upset about making these components and palletizing them for us. So we get the granite at the best possible price and they can work at 100% efficiency, which gives the confidence for them to expand uh, and secure their operation upon which the rest of the, uh, the construction community clearly benefits from better access to Cornish granite as well. We keep the quarries clear through clearing out their hardcore and using it as road sub base. The windows are made uh, from companies in the southwest. 
The concrete block is made with China clay waste from St. Orsul on the south coast a few miles away. Uh, and then we look very carefully at the uh, use of landscape and local plants from local nurseries, uh, supported by the Dutchie nursery. And then the uh, developers are also compelled to use local labor uh, wherever possible to put as much money back into the community uh, as we can. Every house on one of these projects produces about 100 cubic meters of spoil. And whereas these would normally go to landfill uh, further up country, in this case, because the landowner owns the hinterland around the edge of the scheme, the ambition is to put that spoil uh, on the edge of the development to help um, sterilize that land from development in the future, to avoid the problem of coalescence with neighboring settlements, and also producing exceptional quality green infrastructure, uh, which uh, the, our community can benefit from. So on the slide here, you see that, that the land falls away uh, on the right-hand side of that part of the master plan. And so we use uh, spoil to make a series of terraces, which can have, make a community orchard and allotments to create high quality green infrastructure, which benefits the community, but also saves uh, money on muck away, which we can then put back into the scheme in other ways. Uh, the community orchards uh, are already underway uh, on another part of Newquay. We have a partnership uh, with them and they have excellent relationships with local schools and include people with learning difficulties and even ex-offenders to help bring the community uh, together and to use the nature of this development to create opportunity for uh, all aspects of the existing community quite apart from the people who are coming in to live in Nansleden. Uh, ecology I mentioned is massively important. We've been doing a lot of work with the RSPB just as an example of this, looking at how best to integrate bird boxes in the development and the new British standards on, on the integration of bird boxes uses Nansleden as an exemplar but every, every house has a typically one thrift box uh, per home. Uh, they're often, in fact, clustered in groups rather than show on these slides where these buildings have one uh, per house. And then we have another range of initiatives for bats and owls. And the, the ambition is to improve the habitat from what we have uh, at the moment. I mentioned uh, food strategies. Um, the streets have an edible planting um, ambition. So the trees tend to be fruit trees or nut trees and front gardens tend to be uh, with herby plants so that people can actually grow things which are useful whilst giving the scheme a very distinctive character. And those sorts of plants tend to be more resilient in the Atlantic weather that we have uh, at, at Mansleden. We have an arrangement too for, um, for creating residential squares which combine allotments with a community garden and play space. Uh, this is quite unusual, but we find it very successful as a way of bringing the new community uh, together. We also have um, banks of allotments on the hinterland between the existing uh, community and the new uh, residents and that becomes another way of affecting uh, mixing the people up and creating a stronger community um, overall on a scheme of this size you need to create strategic alternative natural green space uh, on this case the dutch owned the a farm on the uh, edge of the development which had been used for growing turnips it was third grade agricultural land and working with an ecologist, we found that one of the fields had unimproved grassland with the indigenous wildflower species mix. And so by matching that and impoverishing the ground, we've managed to recreate wildflower meadows of the right mix of uh, flowers. And there's now a, a herd of Red Devon beef cattle, which don't mind people with dogs. So people can take their dogs for a walk in this wildflower at meadows. And obviously there's a, um, a herd there, which over time can be used as part of a local food source um, as well. At the moment, we have 600 houses uh, built. We have about 25 businesses who have, have got space uh, there. It's quite unusual for these schemes to um, have non-residential uses. And of course, most development uh, is built by house builders who only want to build houses. One of the successes of Nansleden is the fact that we are integrating commercial units with uh, the scheme. Uh, and one of the models we have, which was learned from Poundbury, that, um, that units of six to 800 square feet coordinate perfectly with one and two bedroom apartments, as you can see on the top left hand side here, an example of that. And those sorts of units can either be a little shop or an office, and sometimes you can knock them together to make a bigger unit. All 25 businesses we've created so far are full, and we now have some 40 other local firms looking for similar kind of accommodation uh, in due course. And many of those are attracted by the vision I explained to you uh, at the outset. The left hand side uh, here shows our phasing plan, which inevitably changes um, over time. Uh, each phase is typically about 100 um, houses um, and is governed by a more detailed um, co uh, uh, block plan which my firm produces and then a street character code to ensure that the different types of streets are distinctive a main street is different from a secondary street which is different again from a tertiary street which I'll, I'll show you some examples of that uh, in a minute 
Uh, the slide here shows an aerial view showing the houses which have um, been built um, so far. You can see how we've joined onto the existing road network and we've created a square about with a, a, a monument in the middle of the square around which in time there'll be four Art Deco palaces which have commercial units on the ground floor and apartments above. So it makes the entrance into Nazeden into an urban event um, as well. This aerial view shows uh, our first mixed use um, centre. Uh, with 14 uh, units clustered around two little squares, one hard square and one little green garden square. Uh, you can see also from this slide that the um, parking courts to the rear of the houses have a lot of um, manholes and so on on them. This is because the serving strategy, all the services go from parking court to parking court and not down the roads. This enables us to make the roads tighter, which not only reflects local character, but also provides protection in the winter months from the Atlantic gales. And it means that the meter boxes are kept off the front elevation and all on the backs of houses, which makes a much better quality uh, public realm as well. A lot of people are resistant to parking courts, but we find a model again that was honed through Poundbury. As long as the entrances are overlooked, there's more than, more than one entrance for each parking court. And ideally, if you have houses or what we call flats over garages or fogs in a parking court, so they become part of the integrated network of the urban layout, they work perfectly satisfactorily. Uh, and then underneath them, we have the crates for the SUDS drainage scheme as well. So they work really hard as part of the uh, design of the urban layout at Mansleddon. Um, this photograph shows an area of our community garden, which is just nearing completion at the moment. There will be a little building in the middle of it in due course, and there's a lot more trees that have gone in since this uh, slide was taken. The earlier phase of Mansleddon did not have many trees because we're on the top of a hill, and the salt laden wind from the sea uh, prevents us from planting until we have some buildings uh, erected to create microclimates and that is now uh, happening and we can go back and retro um, plant some of these uh, areas which otherwise are quite hard and going forward as we're going further down the hill we can put more planting in um, up front. This is a view looking along our high street looking down the valley towards where the new market street will um, come uh, and you can see it looks like a, a main street with wide pavements which can be used for cycling as well as for pedestrians. Uh, and front gardens which have railings along the front of them and then fairly grand buildings which are normally two or two and a half to three stories uh, tall and architecturally uh, quite ambitious in terms of their architectural character. Uh, this is a CGI uh, fused onto an aerial photograph. The building on the left hand side is a work hub currently under construction with a coffee shop on the ground floor, uh, a shop on the other side of the building and then office space on the upper floors. The building with a green roof is uh, a nursery school which will be open this coming uh, September for the new intake and on the right hand side there's an office building which again has been pre-let um, and the car park in the middle in the little square is shared by all three of these uses. Um, the photographs at the bottom show the junction with the uh, main road, the square about I mentioned uh, before uh, and the Art Deco mixed use um, buildings. Another problem that we uh, overcame through this uh, development was um, the issue of overcapitalization of some buildings. The truth is that some buildings in, in a town setting are more prominent than others, and therefore it's important they have better materials and the style of them is not constrained by the value you might get back from them. So in this case, these flats above are affordable. And so many house builders would make them as cheap as they possibly could. But in urban design terms, they're more important than that, and therefore you need to overcapitalize them. So the way we rationalize this in our mind is across a phase there's a build price per square foot of a certain amount. And so for the key buildings, we are prepared to overcapitalize them to make them uh, better buildings. And then we'll save some money on uh, buildings on minor streets. So across a phase with the right build price per square foot, but we invest money where it adds value in place making terms. I mentioned materials. You can see on this screen, we have painted brick, painted render, um, and some uh, natural stone which comes from Cornish quarries and occasionally some hung slate uh, as well. And then we have a hierarchy of details from often quite simple details because the Cornish vernacular is quite simple uh, with um, Cornish granite lintels and so on. We found, uh, in fact, because of our relationship with the quarry, a cheaper than a cast stone uh, lintel. And then a series of carefully designed porches that come from local precedent uh, so that, it, again, it all feels like it belongs to uh, the North Cornish coast. Uh, this slide uh, shows a, a variety of house types. The house types we use are standard house builder 
plans. So we, the only thing that we had to be changed is the appearance of the front elevation and the materials from what they might do um, somewhere else. So the house behind is a, is a basic um, uh, developer plan, but the public realm that you perceive when you visit Lands Eden is entirely bespoke. Uh, this adds about 10% to the construction cost, but the added value is at least uh, that and sometimes significantly more. Uh, you can see also uh, an example on the bottom right hand side of one of our shared surface tertiary streets. And many of the streets are really quite tight and we've been working hard with Cornell um, highways to achieve that which has a natural calming effect on vehicular traffic. So it helps to promote uh, pedestrians and cycling. And you can see from these elevations too, there are no meter boxes on the public realm. So we've got a much better quality of public realm than you might find on many schemes um, elsewhere. Um, so the on the primary street, street, I mentioned the high street, the ground floor is typically another 300 millimeters high, uh, which not only makes a character building, which uh, helps you realize you're on a, on a main road, but it also means over time, if the needs of the community change, the ground floor of these buildings can be used for commercial use rather than being stuck with residential use. Um, and you can see also they're set back more from the back of the pavement with railings in this case uh, and grander architecture. Whereas on the um, top right hand side, there's a secondary street where the front gardens have no railings, just have a little hedge uh, and, and small front gardens and the character of the houses is um, much more subdued as well. And much of the impact is to do with the capital use of color um, and, and not relying on elaborate um, details. And you can see that the predominant use of slate on the roof, again, gives you that consistent um, local character, which makes, helps you feel like you're on the North Cornish um, coast. Sure, I wonder if you, have you got more slides, many more slides, we've got a minute or two maybe left, so perhaps you could... Uh, um... I'll, I'll skip over this one. Thank you. Um, so uh, yes, here we've got the, the local primary school that was uh, on the bottom right-hand side that was opened a couple of years ago. It was the first new school in Cornwall for over 30 years. And by making it a two-story building, uh, we got the same build price per square foot as a normal local authority school with much better design and um, quality. The next uh, slide here shows our first local center, which I showed you the aerial view of earlier on with the mixed use buildings I mentioned on. And whilst it's still a building site, you can see it's beginning to develop uh, its own sense of place. So the key principles, just to recap, the dedicated landowner with a long-term interest in development, the strong vision, the holistic approach to sustainability centered on low carbon lifestyles, the importance of ongoing public consultation, the flexible long-term master plan, the common aspiration way of tying all the parties together, and then the use of non-regional uh, PLC, uh, so regional non-PLC non developers is very important, and then looking at the local character, setting up local supply chains, and then steady phase delivery in tune with local market, and the capacity of local people to keep up with us and also making sure we respond to those local needs. Uh, now Zedden is popular, it's grown from 400 houses to 4,000 because the community wants more because we've taken time to listen to their needs and on the left hand side there's a report by Create Streets uh, looking at some of the um, issues behind that and then the Prince's Foundation produced a report building a legacy which looks at the commercial added value through this approach to placemaking. Uh, and Nanzed has also featured more recently in the Building Better, Building Beautiful Commission report, the government white paper on planning from uh, a couple of years ago, and then most recently the National Model Design Code. Many thanks.